Hey yo, welcome to the next installment of the series where we're exploring Ableton 11, everything you need to know. We're discovering music production, we're discovering musicianship, expanding our creativity and our mindset all in one epic series. So welcome once again. And as always, it's Alex here. And with this channel, it's my mission to help you, the musician, the artist, the producer, produce themselves by developing their mindset, expanding their creativity and connecting to their inner artist in a deeper way. And I thought that we could start out a lot of these videos with sometimes a cheesy, a sometimes not so cheesy quote that will inspire you, help you stay motivated moving forward. And let's do this. So today it's Kaizen. And this is a Japanese word that means continuous improvement. And this is kind of the idea of getting 1% better every day, getting a little tiny bit better every day over time adds up to moving mountains. And I invite you to really um, adopt this mindset while you're going through the series because we're gonna keep these videos short and to the point and we're gonna cover one little tiny section per video. And I encourage you that as you just do tiny little exercises, as you move a little bit more forward, as you get 1% better, you learn one little trick, one little thing here, you experiment a little bit there. Over time, you're going to exponentially expand your skill and your knowledge base. So I just wanted to start this video with this idea of just keep going. You got this. Everything is figure outable. Everything is learnable. And I just want to encourage you that if you're feeling unmotivated, if you're having an off day, just keep Keep this in mind that you do not have to do much, even if you're not feeling it, to just advance a little bit every single day. And if you're ever feeling unmotivated, just think of the saying that a journey of a thousand steps is completed one step at a time. All right. So let's actually move over to Ableton. So in the last video, got you to install Ableton. And when you open it up, you might see a demo song with some tutorial stuff about how Ableton works. And I invite you to read through that stuff and explore it. But for the purposes of what we're going to be talking about, I want you to actually go into file and then hit new live set. All right. And when you hit a new live set, it should look something like this. And what is a live set? Well, a live set in Ableton is basically what files are called. Okay. So a file in Ableton is called a set. And these are the folders that keep everything in them. Typically you'll have one set per project or per song. Okay. So just keep that in mind. That is kind of the systematic workflow in Ableton. All right. And before we actually dive deeper into looking around Ableton and investigating what's going on. There's one handy thing I want to bring to your attention before we go anywhere. And that is what is called the info box. So you can find this by going into view and then hitting the info box. And what this will do is it will make this box right here in the bottom left corner appear. And what's super handy about this view is that whatever button you're hovering over, that info box will give you a little bit of an explanation of what that button does. This is super handy to remember and revise what these different buttons do and what these features are capable of. So I encourage you to turn that on right off the bat so that you can explore things and at least get a general understanding of what the different buttons do. And as we move along through this series, I encourage you to open up a Google Doc or open up a notes folder on your phone or just get some good old pen and paper and write down a few key shortcuts that I want you to remember because it will help you navigate around Ableton so much easier. And there's not a ton to remember. There's just a few key ones that I do want you to remember. So instead of clicking that menu, you can just hold shift and question mark to pop that menu up and down as many times as you want. That is a handy shortcut to know. All right. And the next thing we're going to go to is the preferences. All right. And the preferences are very important for Ableton because a lot of its functionality and a lot of its routing and setting things up will be found in the preferences. All right. So to get to the preferences, just hit live top left corner and hit preferences. And I encourage you as well. I'm going to close this to learn the shortcut right away. Okay. To just save you that time. So to open up your preferences on Mac, you just have to hold command and hit comma and they pop up or the equivalent on windows. All right. And I don't want you to get overwhelmed as we open this up. Uh, we're just going to focus in on specific things as we need them and as we explore them. But if you feel like exploring, the preferences, I invite you to check it out. But the way that this is organized is we have these different tabs 
on the left hand side and depending what tab you select it's going to open different preferences all right so where we're going to start is in the audio tab all right because we want to make sure that ableton sound is actually working all right so you don't have to worry about setting up your audio interface your headphones or anything just use the speakers on your computer or your laptop to get started and just hit this button all right and when you hit this button it will turn on what is called a test tone and you should be able to hear a tone like we're hearing. All right, so I want you to go ahead and follow along and do that and make sure that Ableton is generating sound. All right, so you'll see that directly under the test tone, there's the tone volume, all right? And this will actually affect the volume of that test tone. And this is important to learn here is that to change any value in live, all right? Whether it's a vertical or a horizontal, whatever it looks like, you will always click on the value and drag it up or drag it down, all right? To drag up will increase the volume and click and drag down to decrease the volume, all right? So I want you to turn the test tone back on and then practice turning up and turning down the volume. And this is super elementary, but this is the core functionality of how you're going to make things work in Ableton. So let's scroll up this volume and you hear the tone is getting louder. And then if we scroll down, the tone is getting more quiet. So you can go ahead and turn this off now. All right, and just a quick note that volume in audio production and music production is measured in what is called decibels. And I'm not gonna go too deep into what decibels are, but just know that decibels measure loudness, all right? They are equal to each other. And in a digital audio workspace, like we're working here, zero decibels is the absolute maximum volume you can get in a digital space, which is also called unity gain. All right, so that's just a fun fact to remember, something to be aware of. And if you go over zero decibels, you'll get what is called clipping. And clipping is basically when you're overloading the signal and it starts to distort. All right, so clipping is generally something you want to avoid, especially in a digital space, because it will distort the sound and it will sound pretty poopy. All right, another quick little tip to remember is that if you ever want to restore a value that you've changed back to its default value, you can simply just double click on the field. So I double clicked on the field and you'll see that it got restored to its default value. If I scroll it up again and increase the volume, double click, it goes back to its default. All right, the next thing that we have to focus on before diving deeper into Ableton is to set up your audio interface if you have one. If you don't have an audio interface, you can use the speakers on your laptop to get started, but I do recommend that you invest in an audio interface. And alternatively, you can just plug in headphones directly into your laptop and you can use that for now to get started. Um, but I do encourage you to get an audio interface once again. And what you need to do to connect an audio interface is to have a driver for that audio interface. And basically, I'm not going to get too deep into drivers, but a driver allows your computer to recognize the audio interface as an audio interface and allows them to communicate with each other. The huge plus in today's day and age is that a lot of the modern audio interfaces that you buy from the music store, a lot of the entry models such as the Sapphire Solo or the Sapphire 2i4 like I have right here, uh, they actually don't really need a driver. I'm pretty sure they're plug and play. You plug it in and your computer will recognize it right away, which is a huge plus. But if you have an older audio interface or a different brand that might not be as popular, you might have to go on the website of whatever interface you have, search up the driver for that specific interface, download it and install it on your computer, and then you would select it from this drop down menu. All right. And this is super important so that you're able to play back audio through your interface. And then you could plug in your headphones. You can plug in studio monitors eventually. You can record audio such as guitar, such as your vocals into your DAW from that audio interface. All right. So go ahead and figure that out. Get that installed. Get that driver going. And then once you have that installed, your computer should see your audio interface from this drop down menu. So you might not have multiple audio interfaces or devices here like I do, but you'll probably have Scarlett 2i4 if you have a Scarlett 2i4 or whatever interface you have. And then what I want you to do is to select the audio input device and the audio output device as your interface. 
and then we are good to go. All right, you don't have to worry too much about any of this other stuff. We'll cover this later on as we need to. I don't want this tutorial series to just be super linear where I go through absolutely everything. We're gonna be a little bit more dynamic. We're gonna explore things and then we're gonna jump into learning new things as we need to and as we explore things further. So for now, that's all that you need to set up. All right, now that we have that audio interface set up, there's one last thing I wanna talk about in the look and feel. And I encourage you to play around with this and to you can play around with the zoom of your display to make sure that you can read things and that it's easy to interface with. I'm just going to leave this at 100. You can also play around with the theme. You can have a lighter, a brighter theme if you want. You can have the more default theme. You can have the dark one kind of like I'm used to or the super dark one that I like and just play around with some of these settings and get the look and the feel and the zoom comfortable for your preferences. All right. And if ever you want to change them, you can come back to your preferences and then just go in the look and feel tab and adjust it from there. All right. Now that we have that audio interface set up, I just want you to simply go into your samples tab. All right, so now that you have your audio interface set up, all I want you to do is go into what is called the browser view, which is this box over here. All right, this big box. And I want you to go into your samples. If you installed uh, Ableton 11 Suite, you should have a bunch of samples and tools to play around with. But all I want you to do is to test that you are getting audio through to your headphones and your audio interface. All right, so simply just select one of these samples and you should be hearing playback when you click on them. All right, you just click on one of these samples and it should give you a preview. All right, and that's all I want you to do is to make sure you're getting playback, make sure you're getting audio through Ableton. All right, so I'll say it again. If you're just getting started with music production, if you're feeling completely overwhelmed, or if you have trouble finishing projects, or if you want to glimpse inside my own workflow, which we will dive deeper into in the later parts of the series, I invite you to download the free PDF guide under this video. It's a simple seven step framework that helps you go from your first ideas all the way to a finished mix and master. It's super handy to have around the studio as a printout. So if you're interested in downloading that, you can grab that below and it'll actually be super Super useful for you to get familiar with that as we start to investigate the different phases of that workflow. So go ahead and download that below. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. We're just getting warmed up. We're getting ready to go on this epic journey together. Yeah, and if you have any questions for me along the journey, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I will be happy to answer any questions or concerns you have. If you got value out of this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. And hey, if you have a friend or you know someone else who would be super interested in producing music or they're a musician, you know they would create something amazing from just learning the ins and outs of the software, then I invite you to share this series with them so we can all go on this journey together. All right. So remember Kaizen, just small steps forward each and every day. And I want you to stay motivated, stay inspired. It's going to get more spicy and more fun as we move along. So we'll see you in the next video.